I'm Fanika Friend. Hey, it's LeBron, and we're back for the, I think, third installment of our um, Couch Conversations dealing with relationship goals. So today, we're going to talk about relationship restoration. Um, I'm going to try to very quickly just give you all some tips and pointers from our life and experience on what restoration looks like and how that can mirror if you're married, if you're single and you're trying to decide if this is worth restoring and moving on with, if you're in a courtship period, whole nine yards. Now, when we look at it from a biblical perspective, there had to be a place where even Adam and Eve were restored. They had to make up a mind, their mind that they had something worth fighting for. Mm-hmm. So, mm, Fanika, from your perspective, what does restoration or relationship restoration, what does that look like? Well, first I would like to say that is only something that particular couple can ask because what someone might say, I can't get past That's that. True. Another couple can't. You know, a lot of people say, oh, if somebody cheats on me, I'm out. I ain't never going. You, you know, mm-hmm. I'm done. I'm going to get a divorce. But then we know friends and we, we know couples true. who have come back that and who have really fought to get back, you know, to that place of restoration right. um, for their marriage. So first I would like to say is get people out of your business. I, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need you to put like, I, I need you to put your foot in that one. Say that one again. Get people out of your business. And not all people because you do need wise yes. counsel. Now you do need wise counsel. Absolutely. You do need wise counsel. But going to tell Pookie and Ray Ray now. Pookie! Where and, Pookie come from anyway? Pookie. And telling all of them. And listen, they'll say, girl, if I was you, I this would I lead that joker. Uh, Man, if I was you, the way these women, these chicks out here, they bad. I leave her and get me somebody else. Ain't an interest in the people that normally give the most relationship advice. Single. Ain't got nobody. Ain't got nobody. I'm talking about sheets just bare. Bare. Cold in the winter. Cold. Cold in the winter. In the winter. Yeah. Bare sheets. (laughs) But, you know, it is so easy, you know, for us sometimes to get frustrated, even in relationships, you know what I mean? And so we in this age where everybody wants to vent, you know, people get on social media, Mm -hmm. tell all of their doggone business, Mm -hmm. and then they go back to the person, and then everybody is still hung up on what you said about X, Y, and Z. And one thing about restoration is, I think you need to take a place to get into a quiet and a still place, almost something about what you was talking about last night, even in um, our Tuesday service, you know what I mean? Getting in a place because sometimes we can get mad and we can move so quick out of our emotion Mm -hmm. instead of sitting and just taking the emotion part out of it and saying, man, what is really best? best?" You know, and even for us, you know, we we almost ended up there, not because of uh, uh, indiscretion, not because of I desired someone else or I thought you desired someone else. It was communication sure. and, and and time management in mm-hmm. a sense of I felt that you had started to put the church above your family. Mm-hmm. I didn't quite know how to communicate that because you were a pastor and I felt like I would be this terrible wife mm-hmm. if I, you know, said this is the thing. And so I just kept masking it and hiding it and saying, I don't need this. I don't need this from him. I don't need this. You know, and then to one day I end up packing up my bags and, and my kids' bags. And it wasn't And easy. she's a runner. She forgot to add that part. She is by I nature am, I a am, runner. I am by nature a runner, but I am the type of person I'm going to say something once or twice because, I, you know, if I think it, I say it. I'm not going to be arguing. I'm not no nagging wife. But if I say it and if it don't be adjusted, I'd be ready. To, I mean, just out. I mean, out the I'd door. be ready to be out the door. So I, I think for every, you know, couple and for every relationship, you've got to examine, um, one, if you're in a marriage and you're already in it, um, I think that the only real grounds for um, separation and a lack of desire for restoration are, you know, abuse, infidelity. Like, I don't have a long list of reasons from a marriage perspective of the pieces that are just, that just can't be restored. But I mean, but even some people, even in infidelities, they come back. And they and, do. And, they bounce and, back. And come back strong. And you, we've you known, know. we've known cases of abuse that come back and come back strong. But if I'm going to deal with the single people, peace, I will say this, when you're in a relationship and something challenging happens from a 
uh, a dating or courtship perspective, let's just say that in the midst of courtship, uh, they become abusive or they start hitting Excellent. or they, they start cheating. Um, one thing I say before you come into covenant, you have to watch the patterns. Absolutely. You have to see if this was a one-time indiscretion or if this is something that is a part of their makeup as an individual because you don't just marry the person, you marry their pattern, mm -hmm. right? So you become connected to forever the pattern that they're exhibiting or the pattern that they are showing you in those moments. So if he, if he already knocking you upside your head, don't think that a ring is gonna change that. Listen. Or if she already loosened the draws and she tr I can't say that? that would, okay. It, if she's already- <laughs> <laughs> loose booty. If she already loose booty, <laughs> if she already is giving it up for the whole team, it doesn't necessarily mean that a ring and a wedding ceremony it's is going to change. It's going to teach her how to be a wife. The other part for restoration for me is, and I, I, Fanika started talking about it, is being sure that you have the right counsel, the right people in your corner to help you make sound decisions. Typically, when we are emotional and we've got um, these these different feelings that are, have flooded our heart and our mind, we don't think from a very clear space. So we need somebody that we can talk to that can help us clear up the cloudiness in our thinking so that we can think rationally. Otherwise, we'll always be making irrational moves. Absolutely. And don't say, you know, and we hear people, especially when children come to play, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm only going to do this for my kids. Mm -hmm. My kids turn 17, 18, I'm out. You know what I mean? That's silly. Why would you stay somewhere? Well, I always say this. I'm not going to be married and miserable, okay? Listen, I'm, if if I'm going to fight for my marriage, I ain't just fighting say, so my say kids. Say that with your chest. I, I'm not going to be married <laughs> and I'm not going to be miserable. Do you understand that? I ain't going to do that. But I always say, you know, people say, uh, I'm just I'm, I'm just going to stick it out for my kids. Why can't you stick it out for the two of you? Yep. You know what I mean? Why can't you like what's 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 going on here and restore this first? Mm -hmm. And I promise you that stuff spills out to yep. your children. But when this here ain't right, I promise you kids see it, yep. kids know it, kids feel it. But like you said, back to, uh, you know, like singles, realize what is your deal breakers? What is your red flags? What are the things that you just absolutely cannot positively deal with? And you know, if, if, if those things, it don't even it don't even make sense to even go to the next level with that person. And you can't just be holding on to people just because you feel the pressure of even getting married because you will end up in the space where you're going to feel like you need restoration I, before absolutely. it even starts. And what sense to, does it make to spend and invest time with somebody that before you even say I do, you, you already need counseling for a marriage you're not in. Or when I say counseling for a marriage you're not in, you have already created a list and litany of marital issues before you even say I do. Now, I believe strongly in premarital counseling. I believe strongly in postmarital counseling. I believe everybody needs somebody that they can talk to that can be a different ear and give different perspectives. I also believe that relationships can be restored, mm -hmm. even in the worst situation or at the worst crossroad or at the most challenging moment that you all have seen or experienced. I believe in restoration. I have watched even in our own family, in our own life, Fanique and I have always loved one another, but there have been moments where um, love just wasn't enough. Absolutely. We, just, we didn't like each other. You know, we loved each other, but we, at that time, we just wasn't liking each other. And a lot of it had to do with communication, it had to do with um, finances that were not lined up and things in our home not being taken care of. Mm -hmm. And because there's a lack of communication there, we always, and I think, you know, for us, the place where, the reason why we've always been able to find a solution for restoration is because we built on the right foundation to begin with. We've always had something to fall back on, even at our worst moments. Absolutely. And that, that happened because we didn't just rush into it, just Absolutely. to say that we were going to be married. We knew we, we knew we liked each other. We wanted to be with each other. But even after we got engaged, we pushed our uh, wedding back another year. Absolutely. We waited it was like four months before our wedding. We said, just can't do it yet. And we pushed it back another That's year. So true just to be sure every part or as many parts of our life, our lives could be in sync and together. 
So I think that the, the greatest piece we all need to take away from restoration is you've got to know you and you've got to know the one that you're with. Absolutely. All right, and that's before marriage and even more so after marriage. And you've got to understand for you what those deal breakers are relationally. And if you start seeing the signs of those before you say, I do, don't say I do just because you already bought a dress. Listen. Don't say I do just because you already picked out your groomsmen. Don't say I do. Because then I get a ring. You, you got a ring. It looked like it came out of a quarter machine, but you did, you did have a ring. You gave it back. But it, it looked like it came out of a quarter machine. It was tiny. It was, yeah. But you gave it back. I did. Praise his name. You wouldn't have had all this. I wouldn't have had all this. Mm -hmm. With no restoring that. No restoring that. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we hope there's a little tidbit on relationship restoration. And let me just end with this. Anything in God's hands can be made better than it was when it started. Mm -hmm. right, that's every relationship, even if you find yourself in the depths of a valley. I believe with God's hand on it, he can restore any parts of that. So, And don't let pride be the thing ooh. that get in your way of, of, of restoration. Because a lot of times we want to say you was wrong mm -hmm. or I was wrong. And it's not about who is right or who is wrong, but the overall picture of, you know, mm -hmm. of, of why we said I do from yep. the jump. It's not all the way, all the time about who's right and who's wrong, yep. you know, as it comes to... To restoration it, what it is is who is the bigger person you know what I mean to mm -hmm. get the ball back rolling like you know what we got to work on this you walking by and speaking I'm you know we, we, we in this house together and we acting like this who is gonna be the bigger person to step up and say and I'm thankful that is that is typically mm -hmm. your job that is your role I won't say it's your job but I mean it is your role because that's just you, ain't me you, you just said you're not gonna have to apologize it's I just, do you just said to, to the whole all of America I all apologize. the entire world you're, you're, you're just not the apologetic one. I yeah, just don't just... apologize first. But... but it's because you never feel like you're wrong. And most times I'm not. 90%. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> thank y'all for watching it <laughs> on this segment. We <laughs> hope this little tidbit helped. Hey, any comments or any questions you may have, just hit the comments right below here. Drop it for us. We'll do our best to get to all your information as quickly as we can. Thank you for watching today. And subscribe. 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 Just right below, just hit that subscribe and like button. All right, see y'all soon.